and it all is revealed here. We have four different aromas. Each aroma is uh, connected to a different ingredient. Hi guys, it's Stevie from Ireland Before You Die, and today we're outside the home of Ireland's most famous drink, Guinness. We're here to meet Colm. He's a beer specialist with Guinness, and he's gonna show us around and show us what you can experience inside the storehouse. Let's go. Colin, thanks for having us. Stevie, lovely to meet you here. Welcome to Ireland's number one tourist attraction, the Guinness Storehouse. Delighted to have you. We're built on 263 years of expertise, and the first thing that you'll see when you come to the Guinness Storehouse is the lease that Arthur Guinness signed. 263 years ago. It's the last day of 1759. And the most interesting part, Stevie, is the bottom right hand corner beside the red seal there. That's Arthur Guinness's signature. And you recognize it because it's on every can, every bottle of Guinness, nearly 160 countries right across the globe. I've seen it many times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this particular uh, building itself is, is not from uh, 1759. This building actually is cutting edge 20th century architecture and it housed the fermentation plant uh, for nearly 80 years in the 20th century. And, uh, when we opened as our visitor center uh, in the year 2000, uh, we actually did two things to the original building. The first thing we did was we actually uh, constructed uh, the world's largest pint-shaped glass you can see right around us here. Um, now this glass can actually hold 14.3 million pints of Guinness, believe it or not. They tell me they're not gonna fill it today, unfortunately. Second thing, uh, we actually built Dublin City's highest bar right up at the top on the seventh floor. That's the gravity bar, and that's where we're gonna go a little bit later on. Right, so we're gonna uh, go straight into ingredients. We're going to basically explain the four constituent uh, raw materials that we use uh, in every pint of Guinness. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so Stevie, uh, this is the barley, okay? Um, and we uh, actually take barley from well over 300 barley providers, principally in the Leinster uh, region, but it's all Irish. And 80% uh, of the barley we use is malted. It uh, undergoes a malting process where we extract the fermentable sugars and they later turn to alcohol, which is obviously essential uh, for brewing. And then the other 20% is unmalted. Uh, we Divide that into two, 10% will go straight into the beer, give a bit of a, an edge to the flavor, and then the other 10% is very important. We actually send that to the roast house, and uh, we roast it at a very high temperature, 232 degrees Celsius, believe it or not, and that obviously imparts that dark color to the beer, which is part and parcel of all porters and stouts, and also, more importantly in my view, gives it a fantastic coffee or chocolate-like flavor. So we're gonna head around the corner here to hops being the second ingredient, alrighty. Okay, so hops uh, is the only uh, ingredient that we actually import, believe it or not. And you'll see it's a tall vine-like plant. It's actually the cone in the plant that we use. We actually boil it, believe it or not. And what that does is it imparts bitterness to the flavor. So you'll get sweetness from the malted barley, but you'll actually get bitterness from the hops. It also uh, acts as a natural preservative as well, which was very important uh, back in the old days. Um, and they did say that beer was a lot safer than water, particularly in built up areas. So everybody was drinking in beer uh, essentially 100, 200 years ago, you know? So this is yeast, okay? Uh, yeast, very much connected with this uh, building involved as it is in the fermentation process. So what happens is that you extract all those sugars, which is known as wort, you pitch the yeast and the yeast gobbles those sugars and converts them into alcohol. And essentially this is what occurred in this very building for just over 80 years. What's the deal with the safe? So the story with the safe is that uh, it's kind of to underline the importance of yeast. Uh, you know, you can replace and replenish the other three ingredients within Guinness. You cannot replace yeast. Yeast is unique to that particular beer. And it's, as you probably know, it's a legacy, so it has been handed down because what happens in fermentation, the yeast actually um, uh, creates more yeast, produces excess yeast. So what brewers have been doing since time immemorial is essentially siphoning off that extra yeast and putting it into the next batch. So you're maintaining that kind of consistency in the flavor. So yeast, you know, cannot be overemphasized. It is actually the watermark or the kind of the DNA of the beer. So nobody can brew Guinness like we do because nobody has our yeast except ourselves. 
Great, and the last ingredient, of course, Stevie, is water. Uh, over 95% of beer is water, and uh, the reason why Arthur Guinness would have come to this particular part of Dublin was that there was a confluence of two streams, um, and so a lot of breweries and distilleries actually did grow uh, in this area. Uh, but of course, nowadays, we take our water from the main metropolitan supply uh, from the Wicklow Mountains, just south of the city. Right, so here we are on the brewing floor. So we've shown you the ingredients. Now we're going to explain a little bit about how we put those ingredients together. And uh, as I said, 10% of the total amount of barley that we use is roasted, uh, as per all porters and all stouts. And we kind of explain it just uh, in front of us here, the effect that the temperature has on the appearance, but also affects the aroma, the mouthfeel, the flavor, obviously. And uh, you'll see that we, over time, over the two and a half hour period, uh, we go from zero degrees right up to 232 degrees Celsius. That's the optimum temperature. And uh, we have expert roasters uh, across the road there, and they will take periodic samples to test uh, for the standards of roasted barley that uh, we obviously require for Guinness. Uh, now, here in the brewing floor, uh, you know, you will see a lot of old equipment. You know, some equipment is made of wood, um, some of um, copper, but of course, we all brew in stainless steel today. But the brewing, brewing process itself uh, essentially remains the same. Um, so we take the roasted barley. We do need to uh, send that to the mill along with the malted barley and the unmalted barley. So that actually cracks open um, the, uh, the grains. So once we have this uh, powder, which is called the grist, we need to get the brew going, and we do that in what's known as a mash tun, where we add it to the water at around about 62 degrees Celsius. And the whole process then, from start to finish, is anywhere between five to seven days uh, in terms of uh, a batch of Guinness. And would you believe uh, we can actually produce up to three million pints of Guinness in one day here at Brewhouse 4, yeah, at St. James's Gate, which is quite phenomenal. Every day at 10 o'clock we have our uh, sensory panel. Uh, they get together and they um, taste uh, Guinness and many other Guinness variants to make sure that it uh, meets the requirements uh, that obviously we fit, uh, that, that we have here at St. James's Gate. So when are you hiring? We're, we're not hiring at the minute. Yeah, there's a long, there's a long list. I think I, th I think the in tray for uh, CVs is quite is quite high. That's what they tell me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> So we're going to head up now to the tasting room. So uh, we have seen the ingredients. Uh, I've explained a little bit about what we do with those ingredients. And now uh, I'm going to show you uh, why we have those ingredients. In other words, what do those ingredients actually give to the beer in terms of flavor? Um, but it's quite an interesting way of expressing or kind of illustrating flavors, if you like. Um, we first start with our sense of smell when you're working towards your sense of taste because the two of them are, are uh, interconnected. Now we're going into the tasting room, so uh, I'm kind of going to explain a little bit about the flavors that we get within Guinness. And uh, we, we don't go directly to the taste buds. What we'll do is we'll teach a little bit about the aromas that you'll get. So essentially, kind of giving you the concept of flavor with your sense of smell and then working towards your sense of taste. And it all is revealed here. We have four different aromas. Each aroma is uh, connected to a different ingredient, okay? So it's not just one aroma. That aroma has got component parts. Like the flavor of Guinness, it is made up of uh, other uh, ingredients. So we're actually gonna start off with this one here, which is the malted barley, okay? So, I explained that the malt essentially is going to give you the sugars that are fermentable and they will obviously be converted to alcohol, but it also does give a singular flavor as well, you know. The malted barley will actually give you notes of toffee, notes of caramel. It's generally going to be the first flavor that you'll get uh, when you're drinking Guinness. Um, the malted barley combines very well with the second one. So you want to put your nose in there, uh, Stevie. Yeah, kind of a, a sweet, slightly heavy uh, kind of aroma there. And it's generally going to be the first flavor that you'll get. But the malted barley combines very well with the second ingredient that you'll see here, which is beer esters. And esters actually come from the yeast. So 
Uh, the yeast, not only is it functional in terms of uh, converting those sugars to alcohol, but it does leave behind a singular flavor. So, you know, no one in the world can brew Guinness like us because they don't have the yeast. And that gives, a, as I said, a, a very particular kind of X Factor type uh, flavor to it. To me, for all the world, that smells like butterscotch. Would you I agree? I like the smell. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? So, nice, yeah, yeah. the butterscotch from the beer esters is not a million miles away from the toffee and caramel of the, the malted barley. And those two combined to give a kind of complexity of sweetness that you'll get generally as the first flavor when you drink Guinness. Now, we're gonna to go to the second flavor uh, that you should perceive when you're uh, tasting Guinness. And this really is the, the bedrock. It's really like the keystone of all porters and stouts, and that's the roasted barley. And as I said, we're it's the only. Strong stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. So that's coffee, dark chocolate. Yeah. Uh, uh, and as I said, we're the only major brewery in the world to, to roast here on site. And uh, not only does it uh, give that dark colour to all porters and stouts, but it does give that, you know, singular flavour that very much kind of is uh, representative of the style. You know. So. Coffee chocolate, generally going to be the second flavor that you'll get within Guinness. And then the last one then, uh, right behind the tongue, is where you will perceive the hops. Now, you get this kind of... Uh, kind not of, as strong as the others. Not as strong as the others. No, it, it, it is quite difficult to translate uh, bitterness into an aroma. But uh, I would say you get a quite a mild kind of organic type uh, aroma with this, all right? So essentially what we do here is that we kind of explain through your nose what to expect when you're having your pint of Guinness a little bit later on. And what I try to uh, impart to everybody that comes here is to why Guinness is the best beer in the world because it is the best balanced uh, beer. So uh, effectively, uh, if Guinness was a person, it would be me standing right here in the middle. So you have some sweetness, you have some roast or chocolate and you have some bitterness as well, but you have them all in equal measures. Uh, and of course, Guinness Draft is obviously very, very smooth by its nature. So you get that lovely, smooth uh, and kind of uh, mellow delivery of all of these flavors all at once. So is it a sample of Guinness Draft Stout for you there, Stevie? So essentially here, what you're seeing is the Guinness uh, surge, okay? Uh, whereby the nitrogenated beer passes through the tap uh, it's high pressure and what that does is it knocks those nitrogenated bubbles out of solution creating this uh, miracle of modern technology, miracle of modern uh, uh, innovation and uh, now it takes 119.5 seconds for those bubbles to go up to the top but they do ultimately get up there and then they form that very thick knit uh, head at the top and that keeps the flavors very fresh. Uh, always remember you should wait for Guinness to settle before you drink it that's number one. And there's a reason for that because those bubbles, they're, they're actually quite bitter. So you need to allow them to rise to the top, forming the head. But don't forget when it's settled, all of the great flavors, the malt, the esters, the roast, the hops are always in the dark body of the beer. All right. So it has to be a big mouthful as well. You should never sip Guinness. Because if you sip Guinness, you're just going to get the white head. Uh, and, and again, that's quite bitter. Whereas all of those great flavors are to be found in the dark body of the beer. That's why you see seasoned Guinness drinkers give themselves a, a, a generous mouthful. Right, so Stevie, the best part now, you're gonna taste uh, Guinness, wait. okay. Uh, so essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're gonna do a technique whereby you connect your nasal receptors with your taste buds because they, they talk to each other and gives you that kind of uh, fully informed, uh, I suppose, information on what the flavors are all about. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna breathe in through your nose, give yourself a generous mouthful, fill your mouth, let it coat the palate, so let it rotate around your mouth about three or four times, swallow all of the beer, obviously, and then after you've swallowed, keep your mouth closed. What you do is you exhale through your nose, and then you should be getting those fantastic flavors coming through, okay? You ready? Fantastic, okay, so, so breathe in through your nose, big mouthful, that's it, fill your mouth. Now let it go right the way around your mouth, twice or three times, okay, swallow everything, and you breathe out through your nose. Yeah, so as soon as you breathe out through your nose, straight away you're going to get the malt. Yeah. Uh, that kind of light oh, toffee, unreal. yeah, malt and barley. Yeah, you can try again. You get the roast, and then, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? It is the best beer in the world, no doubt. All right, we'll head on so, will we?
Welcome to uh, the, the magical world of Guinness advertising here, Stevie. Um, essentially, it tells the story of uh, our, our, our trajectory through marketing, through advertising, and uh, a lot of the images that you'll see, such as the Guinness Toucan, are now iconic. Uh, and we've been advertising since 1929, believe it or not. So this is where you can kind of jump into the deep end. We have the Gilroy animals here, as you can see. Uh, John Gilroy was the artist contracted by Guinness and he came up with the toucan and a lot of the other animals that we can see here. And in actual fact, the zookeeper, who is always in constant pursuit of the cheeky animal, is actually based on Gilroy himself. So evidently a man with a sense of humor, you know? So welcome to Stouty, Stevie. This essentially is where we're going to take a picture of your beautiful face, send it to the printer, and then in turn print that beautiful image then on top of the head of a pint of Guinness, believe it or not. Um, and you can drink that pint as well, which is probably the best thing. Best pint ever. Right, so here we go, Stevie, here we go. Three, two, one. Beautiful, fantastic, yeah. I'm gonna pour it now. Right, so you're just hitting the inside of the golden harp there, and then we're just gonna go right up to the top. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna stop there, I just let that settle. It's like your regular kind of inkjet printer, if you like, you know, your, your regular office printer, but the, the genius is just substituting the ink for uh, malted barley extract, which is quite clever, you know? Stouty mightn't have been here when uh, the last time you visited us was here, uh, uh, Stevie, but that's the beauty of Guinness Storehouse. We're constantly uh, coming up with new experiences, constantly reinventing ourselves. So if you come back in one year, two years, three years, you should have a different experience, okay? Now, Stevie, can you confirm the identity of that man there? That's definitely you? That is definitely me. Good I stuff, okay. The, 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 the resolution on it is it's amazing. This is the first ever pint that has my head on it, so cheers. Flogger. Don't you? <laughs> Good, yeah, you're getting the malt, you're getting the roast, getting it all there, fantastic. Great stuff, yeah, it looks fantastic, I have to say. <laughs> Slodger, Slodger, Stevie. Tom, in your opinion, what makes a great pint of Guinness? So uh, when the beer essentially leaves the brewery, we have got certain criteria in place uh, so that all of our publicans, uh, anyone that, that serves Guinness uh, in a bar, you know, has to meet those criteria so that you get the perfect pint every time. So that essentially uh, requires it to be uh, stored at the correct temperature, dispensed at the correct temperature. Uh, you have got the essentially the correct mix of carbon dioxide and nitrogen, and also as well you have that uh, two-part pour. And if you meet these criteria, you'll get the perfect pint every time. What a day, what a tour. Thanks so much for having us, Tom. It's been an absolute pleasure. No problem at all, Stevie. Delighted. Pleasure mine. And uh, just so everyone knows, how can you book a tour to the Guinness Storehouse? Well, the easiest way would be to book online, guinnessstorehouse.com. And uh, yeah, we'd be delighted to see you all back here and yourself, Stevie, before too long. So uh, cheers. Sláinte. <laughs>